commandment number 10 is thou shall be a shameless cloner you know Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So welcome along to the first episode in the new series I'm doing on the channel uh, right through November this year by the name of Monish Movember. Now, uh, as many of you will know, Monish Pabrai is one of my favorite investors on the planet. He's well known as the shameless cloner. So I thought what better way to honor Monish Pabrai and all the things that I've learned from him than to have an attempt at cloning his moustache. So right through November, uh, for the next four weeks, we're gonna do one video per week, all about the top lessons that I personally have learned from Monish Pabrai. And right through that period of time, we're gonna be attempting to grow the Monish moustache. Now on a more serious note, Monish Movember will also be doubling up as a fundraiser for the Movember charity. Now I have set the goal for November of raising 1,000 New Zealand dollars and that is going to be going towards mental health and suicide prevention. Now each year in New Zealand around 665 people unfortunately take their own lives but the number that many people don't talk about is the 3,885 others that attempt it. Now the more money that we can put towards this cause the better. Unfortunately New Zealand needs far more funding than it currently has to provide mental health services to all the people that need it and as you well know 2020 has been a rough year for a lot of people whether it is financial hardship, uh, whether it is mental struggles from being in lockdowns for a long period of time there's a lot of people really really struggling through 2020 so anything that we can do to raise money raise awareness and help people out uh, that's something I'm more than willing to contribute to so if you're interested in donating towards that thousand dollar target that I have set it will be the first link down in the description even a few dollars helps every little bit helps towards reaching that target uh, and if you're not someone that's in a position to contribute financially um, I'm actually going to be contributing all of the ad revenue from these Monish Movember videos so um, if you're interested in sort of helping indirectly even a like or a comment or a share on these videos in order to get them pushed to a wider audience definitely helps a lot. So with all that said, let's get into the first episode of Monish Movember. The moustache is starting very, very clean and at basically zero, as you can tell. Uh, and the first topic for Monish Movember for today's video uh, is going to be all about shameless cloning. I think uh, it would be a disservice not to start at that point since we are cloning uh, the shameless cloner himself uh, through trying to grow a moustache. So again, if you want to donate, first link down in the description. But for now, let's get straight into the video. In 2008, the University of Nevada came out with a study titled Imitation is the Sincerest Form of Flattery. And basically what that study looked at is it looked at what would have happened to your returns had you cloned the investments of Warren Buffett. The study followed Buffett's investments from 1976 right through to 2006. And the results that came out of that study were quite phenomenal. Now, if you had simply cloned the investments of Warren Buffett, which was public information that was coming out every single quarter then you would have beaten the S&P 500 by around 11% per year. Now from 1976 to 2006 the S&P 500 itself did about 12% per year. So combined you had the S&P doing 12 you were beating the S&P by 11 that means that you were making a 23% return per year throughout that 30 year time frame. So we know that cloning works and it works really really well particularly if you follow great investors but for whatever reason humans really struggle with the idea of cloning they think it's beneath them or maybe they've been taught for many many years maybe through school or university that they shouldn't copy other people's ideas they should think for themselves and do all this sort of thing uh, but the investment business is a massive exception to that cloning rule it works extremely well and the more that you can copy the great investors likely the better you're going to do over a long period of time and there's many examples of this whether it is in the investment business or in business in general now Monish Pabrai often tells the story of two gas station owners. One gas station was directly across the road from the other. They had the same price. They were direct competitors. And at the beginning of this story, they basically had the same level of business uh, each and every year. 
Now what one of those gas station owners then started doing is he tried to begin these new initiatives in order to take business from his competitor from the gas station across the road. It was anything from shining people's tires to changing their oil uh, to checking their water in their car to filling them up with petrol themselves. Uh, all these little things that helped improve the customer experience. Over time it built up a bit of a good reputation for this gas station and the gas station had more and more people choosing him over his competitor across the road. Now what happened next to me is really, really interesting. So the gas station across the road saw exactly what was going on. And initially they thought, you know, this guy across the road is wasting their time. Uh, it's costing them money to provide this extra service to the customers. And they're not really getting any benefit from it. But over time they started to see, uh, you know, the business improve in the gas station that was offering these extra services for free. And the guy across the road that wasn't doing these things and was kind of critical of, you know, his competitor started to see his business slowly fade away. So logically you would think that the gas station owner who was seen his business fade away would start to copy some of these ideas, would start to clone the same things from his competitor and start to try and wrangle some business back. But what happened is that he didn't do that. He thought that cloning again was beneath him. Uh, he thought that all the stuff was a stupid idea and a waste of money. And eventually he lost a huge proportion of his business. Now on the other hand, there are a few examples of businesses that have cloned left and right and have been hugely successful from it. Now, Microsoft is a great example of this that Monish Pabrai brings up all the time. And if you basically look through the long history of Microsoft, you'll see that many of their products are either direct clones, uh, they're kind of clones that they've improved on a little bit over a period of time, or they are products that they you know, didn't clone and they just bought from another company in order to have it in their suite of products. If we look at some of the very early versions of Windows, you'll actually see that that was a clone of the software that was running on the Apple Macs at the time. If you look at Excel, that was a clone of Lotus 123. If you look at PowerPoint, that was actually purchased from another company. If you look at Microsoft Word, that was actually cloned from WordPerfect. And if you look even in more modern times, you will see examples of many clones within the Microsoft business. If you look at something like Microsoft Teams, you wouldn't have to argue very much to see that that was probably a clone of something like Slack. Now, I've actually been using Microsoft Teams for a little while, even before it got really popular th this year, and I can tell you that the early versions of Microsoft Teams were shocking. They were not very good, and this is actually also something that's occurred with Microsoft. They haven't been afraid to copy ideas or clone ideas, even if they haven't nailed it right down initially, but they get that baseline product there and they continue to improve it over time and eventually take over many of their competitors. Even something like Apple's very successful iPad product was attempted to be copied by Microsoft. The original iPad came out in 2010, and in 2012, Microsoft came out with their first Surface product. Now, uh, if you know anything about the Surface products, they've actually gotten a lot more popular over, over the past couple of years, but they were definitely not popular back in 2012. They were terrible compared to the iPad. Uh, you'd argue in a lot of cases that they're still maybe not that good. Um, but nonetheless, they took that initial idea idea that they got from Apple's iPad. They cloned it, started with a product that sort of worked and got much, much better with it over time. And Microsoft, the business has continued to grow and benefit from all of these cloned technologies. So hopefully those give you a few more reasons to think about cloning in your own investments. I know this is something that I have done personally for a long period of time. If I look at my portfolio, uh, almost all of the companies in there, not quite all of them, but a large number of them are actually clones from other investors that I follow. Every single quarter, I look through the 13F filings. These are public filings that, that come out um, four times a year, and we can see all of the holdings of large US investors. And it's really useful. If you see something in Warren Buffett's portfolio in a large way, if it's a big chunk of his portfolio, or if you see something in Monus Pabriah's portfolio or Guy Spears' portfolio, uh, it's already gone through a lot of filters in order to get there. So if it's good enough for Warren Buffett, it's probably good enough for you. And that for me, as a really, really good hunting ground in order to find investment opportunities. So that is our first lesson for Monish Movember. I do hope you enjoyed. Again, if you're interested in donating to the Movember fundraising, uh, absolutely no pressure to do that, but I will leave a link to that down in the description below. Any support would be much appreciated. 
Again, I'm going to be donating the ad revenue from these Monish Movember videos. So if you can't support directly uh, financially to the cause, I would very much appreciate a like and a comment, anything to get the engagement up and try and push this video to a wider audience. So that is all from me today, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> <laughs>